Hi, we're going to talk about boundary training, which is also what I teach for waiting at doors, waiting at the car door. Boundary training is any boundary that a dog will be going over, so that could be a cross point. What I recommend for you to get your products ready is definitely a treat pouch. You can either use a piece of tape or the line that I have laid out right here. It's a visual item. It's visual for me, it's visual for the dog, and you can also use a mat that will be teaching the dog not to cross that boundary. So re remember what I just said. Stop the tape if you need to, and you're going to have your mat, your tape, or a line, but it's going to be a permanent item for a while, and your treat pouch. Now remember when we talk about behavior and training, that if you haven't watched the Behavioral 101, it's really important again that I'll say that, that you do. The being that I'm getting ready to discuss, low, medium, and high distraction. When we train in the beginning, we're going to train with low, low distraction. Then we're going to go up to medium distraction. Low distraction would be nobody here, nobody at the door. You're just teaching the word and the behavior paired to it. Medium distraction, somebody's outside the door knocking, and that's it. You won't open the door, that's it. High distraction, somebody will be at the door knocking, and you will open the door, and hopefully everything will go smooth. Again, the dog needs to be on the leash. The treat's really small and we're going to get ready. Now remember the visual line is for you and what's important about this is you may have a distance that you prefer. So I'm only doing a recommendation of space, but the goal is to teach a dog that the boundary, they don't cross over and there's a boundary they must wait at as a person comes in or leaves and that that space belongs to the humans and once asked they can come over that space. So we're going to practice with the tape first. So literally, we're going to put the dog over on the opposite side of the boundary. I'm going to have my treat ready to go, but it's not a visual. It's just in my hand hidden. As they get ready, now this puppy's never been worked on anything before. So this will be the very first time. Now I'm going to add a little bit of a distraction because puppy's watching camera. So here's my body language. I, I, wait. I'm helping out with the wait. I, I, wait. And my body language is moving in towards the dog. And imagine that you have a hula hoop around you. That's your space. That's the amount of space that your energy will always reinforce. Uh, wait. Good. Now we're going to mark that good wait. Now remember, this could take four or five repetitions. So if, uh, wait. Good wait. Good, wait. Higher reward for the behavior you want. The more you reward what you like, the more you're gonna get it. Now I'm gonna up the distraction just a little bit. Uh, wait, I'm good. Now I use my body more than I use my leash. Good, wait. Remember the marker word, good, wait, is giving the dog, just like I'm taking a picture, uh, uh, and the marker ah, ah, is the interruption, telling the puppy, I don't want that behavior, I want this behavior. Ah, ah. Good, wait. In the beginning, we use a high reward system. Just like if you get paid more for a behavior, you're gonna repeat that. Good, wait. Okay, now I'm going to release past that point and we're going to introduce just like if it were at the door. So this is medium distraction. I'm creating it with my own. Wait. Wait. Good wait. Good wait. Okay, now this is the door wait. The boundary that we just taught was the wait for someone coming in or someone going out. 
but the dog does not get to join them. This is the dog getting to join you, and it's really important that you make a very black and white training on this so that when a door just happens to be left open by a kid or the wind blew it open, the dog learns to actually still stay at the boundary and not just bolt right through. It's a great lifesaver. So you first introduce it with the six foot line. Wait. And I am a distraction. I would be considered a low distraction. Good, wait. You can add a hand signal to this. Wait. Good, wait. Then we're going to bump this distraction up a little bit and we're going to add it where the door now will be opened. And I walk out. Ah, ah. Wait. Now you see my body language is still facing leaving. I'm not going to turn around and face the dog because, ah, ah. wait. Good, wait. Now once the doggy starts to understand this, that they need to wait and not cruise with you. I, I, wait, good. Then you may go ahead and give them the release word that tells them it's okay to join you. Okay. Good. Now that's a double reward basically because they get to go outside, so it's what we call a jackpot. Okay. Good. And I'm going to try it one more time. So I open the door, dog's on the leash. The reason the doggy is on the leash is we don't want them to end up walking right out that door. Uh, uh, wait. Uh, uh, wait. Uh, uh, uh. If they go across the boundary, just like that, get them right back in it. Wait. Uh, uh. Good, wait. Okay. Wait. Okay. Good. Now the mistake that everybody makes on that is they expect the dog to learn it really quick. You want to do these in short sessions. You want to be consistent. Remember the three C rules. Clear, consistency, and very calm. You want to have a reward system on this and you be train this by a car, the doors. Dogs work for, for not for free, they work for something. So it's really important that you stay consistent with this and the release word to allow them through the door is okay. Now make sure you practice this on your backyard doors, your sliding doors, your garage doors, any door that the dog could possibly walk out on on their own.